The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion is on. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Today, they face two challenges set by Judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. I'm ready for it now. Hopefully what will set me apart is having some individuality and, and personality on the plate. I'm going to give it everything I've got. I do want to put myself out there amongst the other competitors and show what I can do. The minute our chefs walk into the MasterChef kitchen, that's when the challenge begins. That is when the pressure is on. Let's see if they have what it takes. Right, skills test time. Monica, love the asparagus, slightly confused over the oranges. What is your skills test? I'm going to get our chefs to make us a sauce maltese, serve it with cooked asparagus and a poached egg. What's a sauce maltese? Sauce maltese is a sauce that's made from a hollandaise with the addition of blood oranges. How long? We are going to give the chefs 15 minutes. If they can make an hollandaise, that's a walk in the park. I'm not so sure about no. that. <laughs> Go on, chef. Show me how it's done. All right, let's do it. I'm just going to prepare my asparagus first. I'm just rounding mine off. You know, I think it's sometimes it's, it's very easy to just hack the ends off and, and stick it in a bit of boiling water. You know, you can take your time and then make it look really lovely. It'd be very interesting to see if they just go straight to the asparagus and peel it all down, because that'd be such a shame. So I've just seasoned my asparagus with some salt there, drizzle of olive oil, and I'm going to grill mine. So the next thing I'm going to do is to get the blood orange reduction on for the sauce maltese. A blood orange is far sweeter than a standard orange. Mm. It hasn't got the sharpness either. And look at that colour. It's, it's nice, yeah! It's nice, That's a beautiful thing. How much are you going to reduce the orange juice by? By half at least. What I want to do is to really intensify the flavour of the orange. We won't need a lot because if we add too much of this orange, the acidity will break the sauce down. So I'm also now going to get on the reduction for my hollandaise. So I've just got some peppercorns. I'm just going to crush them down. And I've got some vinegar. And I'm just going to quickly reduce this down. The vinegar reduction is to make the hollandaise. The orange reduction is to flavour the hollandaise at the end. That's right. So I have my egg yolks and I have my peppercorn reduction here. This is quite hot, so you're going to be very careful when that's added in. OK, so on the bain-marie, at this point, you know, it's about controlling the heat. So it's going to making sure it's not boiling too hot. Don't want to scramble the egg yolks. If they scramble those eggs, they're going to be hard pushed to start all over again. They're going to be they really have. up against it. They have to. Yeah, they have Once they're scrambled, they're no good. You're not going to bring them back. If the, if the sauce splits, you can bring it back. How do you do that? With a hot sauce, you bring it back with an ice cube. And with a mayonnaise, you bring it back with warm water. The opposite. I'm just going to stick this on ice to cool. I'm going to gradually whisk in the butter. And you'll see some chefs do this over the water as well. And that's where the possibility of it splitting, because it gets too hot. So they need to make their hollandaise very, very thick. It's going to have a lot of body, because the addition of that orange juice to it is going to let it out and make it quite runny. This is now quite intense in flavour, so I won't need to add as much to get that hit of the maltese. My asparagus are done, and I'm going to get my eggs ready to poach. I've just added a bit of vinegar to the water, nothing else. The vinegar helps hold the egg together. Uh, the addition of salt actually breaks it up, so never add any salt to the poaching of your eggs. Seen some very, very scruffy poached eggs in our time, haven't yeah. we? That goes onto my asparagus. Oh. And there you have it asparagus, poached egg, and sauce maltese. I think this is a fantastic challenge. It looks incredibly simple, but you've got the preparation cooking of asparagus, the making of a hollandaise sauce, and then turning it into a malte sauce, and then, of course, the poaching of an egg. Sounds simple, but it's not. We've got the eggs, we've got the blood oranges, got the chefs, get them in. Let's do it. First up is food development manager, Arnoux. Originally from France, he's now based in London. 
been a chef for 21 years. So I started when I was 14 in France. I worked for uh, Michelin Star Kitchens. I work for uh, a food importer. We specialize in uh, fine Italian food. My job is to source new products, make sure they're the best, and working in the kitchen here, uh, developing uh, exciting menus. I don't really do service anymore, but the pressure in my job and the skill set needed, I think it's really going to help me in the competition. I'm very excited about it, I can't wait. I think I'll be nervous, uh, I think I might get the shakes. But if I made a dish that really impressed Marcus Wing and, and Monica, uh, it means the world. Today, I would like you to cook us a poached egg with asparagus and a sauce mortaise. Okay. The base is uh, hollandaise. Yes. And you need blood orange in it. Thank yes. you. You will have 15 minutes. Bring it on. You've had five minutes already. Arnaud, where are you from? I'm from a um, little place near Paris called Le Mans. We're actually quite a big place. It's famous for car racing. Yeah. Uh, I've been living here for probably about 20 years, actually, which you can probably see why. Yeah, I getting, can see uh, why. Getting a little bit older. Uh, obviously, you've been here a bit longer. Uh, I can see. You have only five minutes left. Five minutes. OK, plenty. You've got two minutes now, Arnie. What are you cooking now? Just want to flash. Flash with asparagus. That's it. Done? Done. Nice. The asparagus, very watery, because you threw them into a pan of water and, and then into a cold pan, a bit on the crunchy side still, and, and, and not seasoned, not great. Poached egg is nicely cooked. Your sauce mortaise doesn't have any orange flavour through it. It is slightly undercooked. I've got a nice poached egg, <laughs> and after that, it starts to go wrong for me. My asparagus needs to be cooked more. My sauce more taste has no sweet taste of orange at all. Arno, this is a very bland plate of food. I'll be very disappointed if I was served this in, in, in a restaurant. But you know where you've gone wrong today, Arno. I'll come back stronger, and I'll, I'll show you that I can cook. Arno, funny enough, when you say I can cook, I completely believe you. Thank you. Off you go. Thank you very much. much. I'm not sure they do very good cooking in France. Oh, shush. Sure. Not like the English. Oh, dear. I feel like I've just done this guy dive. I'm glad I didn't mess up the pushed egg. I don't think I could face my friends. <laughs> it was tough. I need to be strong in second round. I need to show I can cook. And I need to show my passion and professionalism. Next is 35-year-old chef lecturer Rohan, who moved to the UK from India 10 years ago. He currently teaches at a college in Scotland. I'm really enjoying working with the students. It's always good to pass on your knowledge to the next generation. It's fantastic. Every day it says it's a school day. So it's school day for them and school day for us. So this is how it works. This is a test for me. It's a great platform for a chef like me to put my dishes up there and get the feedbacks from the judges. It's going to be a nerve-wracking anyway. 
Today, I would like you to cook us asparagus, poached egg, and a sauce maltese. Sauce? Maltese. Maltese. Right, I've not made that before. It's a hollandaise sauce. Hollandaise, okay. With the blood orange. Fantastic. 15 minutes, Rowan. Give us a great plate of food. Cheers, thank you. Jim. You've only had four minutes. Do you teach your students to make hollandaise? Pizzi and patisserie, more. Pastry? Yeah. About halfway, you've got just over seven minutes left. Seven minutes left. Well done. Thank you. And you had 90 seconds left. Thank you. You seem very calm and in control. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I was just... What's wrong? No, no, just... <sighs> no, I'm just happy. Wow. <laughs> I wish all men cried when they were happy anywhere on me. <laughs> Rowan, you should be pleased with yourself. You just uh, seem very in control, very calm. We've seen a lot of nervous chefs come in here. But uh, there's something about you I think you've done all right today. Thank you very much. Lovely. Look at that. Thank you. Your poached egg is cooked perfectly. Your asparagus is cooked with just the right amount of crunch. Rohan, that's a pretty good job. Thank you very much. I really like the way you've worked today. I love the attention to the small details, such as putting your rubbish in a bowl and putting the, the good bits of the, your, your cutting of your lemons in another bowl. I like that. And I think that level of respect for your ingredients and the way you've worked with a smile on your face is a massive, massive reflection of what's here on the plate. That's probably one of the best skills tests I've eaten on MasterChef. Thank you very much. Very good. Rohan, see Thank you much. soon. Off you go. Thank you. Well, he seems very, very comfortable in a kitchen, doesn't he? I was literally about to cry there. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just got a little emotional there. <laughs> Having uh, such a comment from the market, there, it's a pleasure, obviously. Uh, I mean, no words for me to explain. <laughs> The last to take on Monica's skills test is 27-year-old head chef and pub owner, Harrison, from Yorkshire. We've just taken on the lease, so it's a lot going on at the moment. Our style of food is pushing for the finer things, really expressing ourselves in the dishes. I'm self-taught, but I've worked under some very good chefs where I've picked up a few tricks along the way. The biggest fear for me is the skills test for we've been self-taught. There'll be a lot of things I haven't done yet. So today, Harrison, I would like you to make us a poached egg, cook some of the asparagus and a sauce maltese. Right. I don't know what the last one is. Sauce maltese? Basically, it's a hollandaise-based sauce and you need to add blood orange to it. Right, OK. OK. Harrison, you've got 15 minutes. Right, thank you.
When was the last time you made a hollandaise? A couple of weeks ago. It's split. We've got six minutes to go. Shall I make another hollandaise? We haven't got the eggs. We've got one yolk there. Small amount. You all done? Yes. Yeah. There we are. Harrison, the asparagus, unfortunately, the one that I've had has burnt underneath. Not nice, but the sauce is wrong. In fact, it's, it's not cooked. It's got a bit of sweetness to it from, from the orange, but it's just not a, a good sauce. OK. Harrison, I'm not going to fluff it up. Poaching of the egg's not good. The asparagus cook is not good. And the hollandaise is appalling. Listen, I'm willing to bet a tenner that you are a better cook than you are showing right now. I do think, however, you've got a point to prove to these two. Harrison, thank you. Cook your heart out next round. Will do. Thank Off you. you go. Thanks. That went really bad. It's such a basic thing, but the pressure of it and seeing those three guys was just mind blank. I'll come back fighting. Hopefully they'll like my food. Monica, we've seen the chefs attempt your skills test. Your turn, Marcus. What are you going to get them to make? It looks very much like a cheesecake. It is a cheesecake. It's a banoffee cheesecake with some caramelised bananas and some biscuit toppings. How long have they got for this? I'm going to give them 15 minutes. I would love to see a posh cheesecake in 15 minutes. You're just about to. <laughs> I'm going to be making two different caramels. They've both got the sugar, the butter, one's got cream and rum, and the other's got a banana liqueur. One caramel is for the bananas. And the other caramel is going to go into the cheesecake to give it that banoffee flavour. So we've got them going at this pretty much the same time. There's no water in there, it's just dry pan. Marcus is making a dry caramel. For me, it's, it's one of the safest ones you can use because you can stir it if need be. Why can't you stir a wet caramel? Uh, you stir a wet caramel, you can actually cause it to crystallise. They need to be very close eye on this because at this stage, if it goes too far, it's just going to be black caramel. It'll be too bitter. A splash of the banana liqueur. Drop our bananas into there. As soon as the bananas have gone in, you just shake them around, you make sure the bananas are all loose, and then you just tip them out onto a tray. So the bananas are not overcooked, they've still got a little bit of texture to them, but while they're sitting there in the caramel, they're just gently just cooking away. Okay, our second caramel is coming up. Just let the pan do the work for you. I can start to see the colour now coming through. Cream. Finish with some rum. So you should take it out of the pan into your bowl of ice. I don't need to rush this because it just needs to cool. The minute it's cooled, we can get the process underway and start making the dessert. Now we're going to make our cream cheese. OK, so I've just very, very, very lightly just whipped the cream. Here I've got the cream cheese. I'm just breaking it down, just softening it so that it's at the right consistency so you can incorporate the cream. Just gently fold that in. Now I'm just going to just swap these over and transfer this onto the ice. Can I feel this? I just want to... Oh, right, that's cold. Mm. Right, fine. So the, the most important thing now is making sure that you keep everything nice and cold. If it starts to come to room temperature, I don't want it to run through my piping bag. I want to create layers. That's not a million miles away in consistency compared to what it's about to go into. So this is where it turns into the banoffee cheesecake. If they don't cool that caramel down, that's just going to cook the cream, isn't it? Absolutely. It's just going to become a sauce. We put that into our piping bag now. And then we are ready to assemble our dessert. Yeah. 
So there we have our two biscuits. So that's our sort of base and our topping. A few little digestive biscuits. You just want it to work its way around just by tapping the bottom of the glass. What I'm doing is I'm bringing it all down, but I'm also creating a layer now for the banana. Now for the ginger biscuit. Finish with a little bit of chopped rosemary. Nutmeg on the top. So there we have it. Banoffee cheesecake with caramelised bananas. Not off. That is great. Really wonderful. I mean, this is an amazing dessert. I'd be super impressed if our chefs are going to come in anywhere near this. Let's get the chefs in and see what they create. This, this could be fun. I hope so. <laughs> First up is 25-year-old senior sous chef, Joe, from Winchester. If you want to be the best and you want to be considered one of the best, you've got to put yourself against the best and come out on top. Being in a high-pressure environment is in my history, in my past, has definitely squeezed the best out of me. That's where you really separate the men from the boys. Who handles it, who doesn't, how do they handle it, and to what level. I definitely have a competitive streak, and I try and not let that step over the line into arrogance, but as a chef, that's pretty hard. Yes, I'm competitive, but that's only because I want to push myself. 15 minutes, off you go, Joe. Done pastry before, Joe? A little bit. It's not my most frequent section, but I've uh, been lucky enough to have a spattering of it everywhere I've been. You've had five minutes, Joe. You've got 10 minutes left. Thank you. You're halfway, Joe, so seven and a half minutes left. I think you've got plenty of time. Thank you. Joe, how did that go? I think it's going to taste good. I'm not entirely happy with the presentation. I could have done a bit more of that, I think. The reason why it looks that way is because you're building it while it's still warm. Everything's sort of turning to a big mush. But at the end, it's going to be always about the eating. Joe, it's a very sickly, buttery glass of mush, and it's warm you needed to cool things down a little bit more before you started to build this together. And I think the bananas have started to break down the cream cheese. It's not great on the eating. All I can say is you need to really think through what you're doing and don't run at it, you know, so step back and pace yourself. Looking forward to cooking your own food? Certainly looking forward to it more than ever now after hearing that, so I've got a lot to prove. Very nice to meet you. See you Thank in the you. next round. Thank you. Off you go. Love his energy. Just needs to be more, a little bit more controlled, doesn't it? Mm. I rushed it, made a few rookie mistakes that if I could go and do it again now, wouldn't have happened. I don't disagree with their critique. I'm only annoyed with myself. I'll pick myself up. Next up is 24-year-old junior sous chef, Andrew, from London. Currently, I am at Wembley Stadium. I help to run the Bobby Moore Club, which is the biggest a la carte restaurant in Europe. My real passion is fine dining, but I like classical flavours, but maybe present them in more of a modern way with little twists on them. Because I think that food 
should be a memory. It shouldn't just be, you shouldn't just be eating. It sh you should remember what it is. Service, please. You've got 15 minutes. Off you go. You've had six minutes, Andrew, nine minutes to go. Whatever you want to do to turn this around, you've still got five minutes left. Take a breath. Are you done? Andrew, that looked pretty tough. Yeah, it was. Just... I'm really surprised and really pleased that you actually got that dessert up when you poured the, the hot caramel onto your cheese and your cream. It was a bit of a shock for all of us to see you do that. I've just got a feeling there's just not going to be enough banana flavour in the cheesecake or even enough cheese. Chef, that's weird. That isn't good. It's got so much nutmeg on it, it, it feels a little bit like the mouthwash you get at a dentist. I think the problem with this is like it's, a, it's on the verge of curdling again and there's a very strange sort of fatty taste that goes with it. Andrew, it's not a banoffee dessert at all. Whatever made you pour such a hot liquid over a cream cheese mix, well, it was never going to work. Hopefully I can come back with my dish later on and show you that I can cook. Well, you work at a football stadium, what can I say? You're one nil down, but it's only half time. Andrew, off you go. We'll see you again. His head really dropped there, didn't it? He's going to have to pick himself up. Frustrated and disappointed, really, like, because I know I'm better than that. It's just the nerves and I just wasn't prepared for it, I guess. The final chef to face Marcus's skills test is Brenton. Originally from Australia, he now works at a one Michelin starred restaurant in London. Life is definitely not easy as a chef, but, uh, you know, if you want a social life, then this is not the place to be. But I love it. It's great. The pressure and the intensity of working in the kitchen is, has lots of rewards. Skills test, there's lots of different things that they can put in front of me to do. I'm fairly confident with my skills. I'm a very ambitious chef. I'm not going to be so arrogant to say that I'm going to make it all the way to the final, but I definitely think I'll get through to the settings. Service, please. Brenton, we would like you to make us a banoffee cheesecake, caramelised banana, served in a glass. 15 minutes, off you go. How long have you been cooking in the UK? Uh, for the last five years, I've been over here in Europe. Uh, I did three years before heading over to France for a year. Yeah, worked in a one-star restaurant where I learnt a bit of the classics. Mm. 
You've had five minutes. You've got ten minutes left. Thank you. When you're halfway... Halfway. But this is a, a Bonoffi cheesecake. Bonoffi cheesecake, yes, that yeah. is true. Okay. Did you forget? I forgot the Bonoffi part, yes. Benson, are you going to be making any caramel at all? I will be, yes. I yeah. need to move, yes. You've got five minutes left. Sixty seconds left. Yes. That's my attempt at a cheesecake. Just in the nick of time. One thing I see from you is a level of professionalism which is great and, and I think the error in your work was that you forgot about the title of the dish. It's a banoffee cheesecake which means it's a banana caramel cheesecake mix and that's not, that's a cheesecake which has been seasoned with some banana liqueur and some sugar. I think if you'd have made the caramel and put it through the cheesecake you'd have a fabulous dessert there. I really think the ginger biscuit is brilliant. I just think the cheesecake just lacks a little bit of body and coldness to it, and of course it just misses the caramel. But overall, I think you've done a good dessert. I particularly like the nutmeg on the ginger biscuits. I'd like a little bit more caramel on there. I'd like a little bit more banana flavour. However, first round, pretty good. For me, the, the biscuits are fantastic. They're still crunchy. You haven't put too much butter in it. And then the addition of the fresh ginger and the nutmeg really sort of lift it up. It's not a bad start. How do you feel? Yeah, I was definitely nervous coming into the kitchen. I definitely missed the point on the Bonoffi. Uh, it just got, got lost in my mind. I'm glad that you had nicer, nice things to say about it. Brenton, well done. Thank you very much. Thank See you. See you in the next round. Off you go. Thank you very much. I like him. I really like him. Well, that's by far the best cheesecake. Yeah, I've got high hopes so. It was just nerves that hit me and... I also just didn't look at what was on my bench properly. There's a nice piping bag there. I could have easily used that, and that is exactly how I would have wanted to use it. Uh, just it's not as good as I hoped. Oh well. Two skills tests there, I think, that highlighted some mixed ability. Brenton and Rohan are the two chefs that stood out on both our skills round. Harrison and Andrew have got a lot of work to do. They've got to step up their game on the next round. The nerves hopefully will have disappeared and they should feel very confident and comfortable with their own dish. Do you know what professional master chef has taught me over the years though? Nothing ever goes the way I think it's gonna go. Mm. Whatever happened in the skills test, put it behind you. What is more important now is this, your signature dish. This is a round where you have got to be more confident and really show off what you're all about. At the end of this, we will lose three of you. You're gonna have one hour, 30 minutes to cook the dish that could get you through to the quarterfinals. Give it your best shot. Off you go. having had a pretty bad skills test. The dream scenario for me now is if they all have nothing but good things to say and something along the lines of I've turned it around would be music to my ears.
You're looking much happier this afternoon. Yeah, I've uh, calmed down, like you said. I know what I'm doing. So I've got pan fried sea bass, curried fregola, some red onion and coconut bargies, and a uh, pink grapefruit and lemongrass gel, a little bit of uh, shaved coconut, um, and some basil oil. You're playing with flavours from all over the world? A little bit, yeah. I think, I think modern cuisine shouldn't be afraid to do so, as long as it works. I think a signature dish is a hard thing to come up with, so I think where you're at at that point, that's a good representation of a signature dish, because it's your latest creation. I think you're absolutely right, Joe. Definitely curious about this dish, Joe. Looking forward to seeing if it works. Joe has uh, used the grapefruit to make a gel to serve with his sea bass dish. He also has shaved coconut and a basil oil. This is a fusion of different flavours. I hope everything on this plate will come together harmoniously to make one great plate of food. It sounds a little bit confused to me. I don't particularly want to eat grapefruit and lemongrass with my sea bass. It'll be very interested to see if he can pull the dish off. I always like to put my Indian heritage into the cooking. So I'm going to be cooking charcoal smoked paneer. It's uh, Indian cottage cheese. It's going with the mint chutney, pineapple raita, and a peanut salad. It's about the flavor and combinations, you know, and I hope they liked it, and fingers crossed for that. <laughs> so paneer is the center of your vegetarian dish. Yes, I think a vegetarian is always the big thing in India. If you're going to eat vegetarian anywhere, eat it in India, right? <laughs> That's right. Rahan, what do you want from this experience? It's a challenge for me, and I would like to take a challenge. And that's the reason I decided to do the vegetarian dish, not the meat or fish, which is, I think, it's in my comfort zone. Rohan, the challenge is massive already. <laughs> do you not think that's maybe just testing yourself a little bit too much? And that's what I'm here for. Charcoal smoked paneer. I know there are lots of spices, there are a lot of flavours, lots of marinating of the paneer. I think it's going to be a very strong, powerful, flavoured dish. There's a lot of ingredients, lots of spices, apricots I've seen on there, as well as, as mango and cucumbers. This comes down to having that palate that can balance this. I personally feel that there's a lot resting on this next dish. I think I'm pushing myself. You can't sit back and play safe and hope. Uh, I just need to focus on what I'm doing and get everything on the plate the way I want it. What's your signature dish today? Uh, today I'm making a lamb rump with a tortellini of lamb zoffel, accompanied by some courgettes, served with goat's curd and caramelised walnuts. Have you done this dish before as a whole? Have you actually cooked it in full? Unfortunately, just once. I'd like to be a bit more confident, but I know I'm going to do it, so it's fine. Oh, so you know it's a good dish? I think it's a good dish. And once is enough? I'll make it enough. I love the sounds of this dish. Brenton is making a tortellini to go with his lamb rump. And he's filling it with sweetbreads and some liver, binding it with the chicken mousse. There are places where he could go wrong. The pasta could be too thick, or the, the filling could not be cooked enough, and especially if the sweetbreads go in raw. I hope he's going to chop them up into small pieces and maybe sear them off before it's bounded in the mousse. It's going to be served with a goat's curd and walnut. I'm not sure it's a dressing on the plate or more of a puree. I'm not 100% sure how it's going to be presented, but it's very intriguing that he's serving it without a sauce. You're halfway. 45 minutes left. I'm happy with cooking my own food. I chose this dish because it's very Yorkshire, very close to home. It's got old flavours, but it's wholesome as well. Hopefully, I can prove that nerves won't get the better of me. How are you? Better. I was a rabbit in headlights uh, before. And what are you cooking for us today? OK, I'm doing lamb rump with sheep's milk arancini, some crushed peas and a pea puree garnished with asparagus. So you've got an arancini on the dish. Where do the potatoes come in? The potatoes are all I'm from Yorkshire. It just helps carb up, basically. <laughs> Greg needs to carb up. I've got to carb up like there's no tomorrow, me, Harrison. It's the Yorkshire portion. No, righto. Harrison, looking forward to this. Good. I love lamb rump, and I love it when it's been roasted as well. Arancini, love a good arancini. For me, it's going to be crispy on the outside. The rice is going to be cooked properly and still very moist and whole together. Lamb rump, I love it as well. Peas, bacon, they are beautiful ingredients. 
I'm not so sure about the purple potato, why that should be on that plate. Just wonder if it's just one carb too much. Guys, you've had one hour, it means you've got 30 minutes to go. 30 minutes. I think for a signature dish, I'm going to have to give it everything I've got. I just hope the judges are going to like my food as much as I do, because if they don't, I'm in trouble. Arno is cooking us a roast chicken. He's serving it with a nettle and garlic cream, a bourguignon sauce, snails. I love the sound of this dish. But the thing that I'm really excited about is the fact that he's, he's cooked his chicken on the bone. I want it taken to the next level. I hope Arnold realises that his classic cooking has got to have a wow edge to it. Uh, what I'm cooking today is what I, what I like to eat. And hopefully you like it as well. What, what do you want from MasterChef? I haven't been working in professional kitchen for a little while now. I work in development. I'd like to think that I've still got it, but I don't know. Well, you'll find out very soon. Yes. Can I give you a word of warning? Sure. I know Marcus quite well. Don't disappoint him. He's looking forward to this. Do not disappoint no him. No pressure. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit less confident after the skills test, but I am confident in the dish. I just want to get in there and show that I, I can cook and I do know what I'm doing. Andrew, what's your signature dish? I'm doing a trio of lamb. I'm doing a white pudding wellington, cooking the cutlet on its own, and then I've made some little faggots. You seemed pretty down after the skills test. What do you say to yourself to lift yourself back up? Just that I know I am competent, and I just want to show you, hopefully, that I love food and it comes across when I put that on a plate. Very much looking forward to getting my fork into this, Chef. Thank you. Good luck, Andrew. Andrew's dishes lamb three ways. Always, whenever there's three ways of anything, it's three ways to get it right or to get it wrong. What I'm excited about here is his take on a wellington, a lamb wellington. The crispiness of that pastry is still lovely and pink in the middle. The lamb faggot sounds good. Lamb cutlets, fabulous. Three good pieces of beautifully cooked lamb with a fabulous sauce. That's what I'm looking for. Three minutes. Three minutes, that's your lot. Please, come on. That's it, stop. That's it, time's up. Well done. Brenton, could you come up and join us, please? Brenton is serving roast rump of lamb with lamb's offal tortellini, patty pan courgettes, courgette flowers, and courgette puree, with quenelles of caramelized walnuts and goat's curd. The presentation of the dish is, is fantastic. It's clean, it's tidy, it's fresh, it's on the button. I didn't really think that caramelised walnuts would work with lamb at all, but inside that curd, it works a treat. It's an absolute complement to the dish. The, the courgette puree is beautiful and smooth. The lamb is beautifully cooked and pink, fantastic. Two things that really got me is that the tortellini with a little bit of offal in, I think, is just an absolute delight. But also the sweetness of caramel in goat's cheese is, is an incredible uh, flavour sensation because it goes sour, sweet, back to sour again. Clever cooking, really clever cooking and delicious. I could eat this whole plate on my own. You know, the puree is so smooth that the courgette with the flowers, the tortellini, is, is so well made, and I'm really curious what more you've got up that sleeve of yours. Yeah, I'm over the moon. Um, that's great. I feel really happy with my result. Great feedback. Yeah, I'm so happy. Well done. Thanks, guys. Okay. 
Harrison's rump of lamb is served with sheep's milk arancini, crushed peas and pancetta, pea puree, purple heritage potatoes, and red wine sauce. It's garnished with asparagus tips, pea shoots, and foraged herbs and flowers. Harrison, uh, presentation-wise, uh, for me, it looks a bit messy. It's a very big plate of food. Arancini is, is a snack from Sicily. It's never an accompaniment on the side of a dish. And your arancini are dense. They, they are heavy. In saying this, the beautiful sweetness of peas with pancetta, with pink lamb, is a wonderful thing. On tasting your lamb dish, I, I like the way the lamb's being cooked. I love the peas with the ham, but that's where it goes for me. Harrison, the dish is uh, a, a classic example of a chef that just doesn't know when to say stop or when enough is enough. It's just too big. I agree with what the judges said. The minute I walked out of the door from cooking, I said, I've put too much on the plate. Joe's dish is pan-fried sea bass served with curried fregola, red onion and coconut bhajis, roasted cauliflower, and pink grapefruit and lemongrass gel, garnished with shaved coconut, basil oil, and a crispy potato twill. Joe, the, the presentation for me looks a bit dated. It's a dish that, to me, doesn't look harmonious on the plate. The fish is nicely cooked, however, I think you need to season it a bit more. It's quite bland. The fregola pasta with the curry is it's quite nice, but I think it needs more moisture through it. The coconut and onion bhaji, that I like on its own. So I like elements of the dish, but I don't think it's a dish that actually comes together for me. The twill is too sweet. Where the grapefruit uh, gel comes into this dish, I have absolutely no idea. For me, there's no place for that flavour uh, on the plate at all. I've never had a dish that combines India, Thailand and Italy. However, I like the sweet and sour notes that I get combined with a very well-cooked fish. I think you're really, really clever. Really, really clever. And there are elements on here that really surprise and delight me. Greg was the only person that, that really liked it. I don't disagree with what they've said. They know what they're talking about. That's their opinion, so I don't disagree with it. Anu's roast chicken is served with spelt risotto, garlic and nettle cream, snails in a bourguignon sauce, and a white onion puree. Chicken's beautiful and tasty. The snails are delicious. The garlic running through the whole dish. The oil drizzles on top. This dish has got intelligence about it, maturity. It's a triumph. I love your soft chicken. I like the sweetness of the spell. I love the crunch of those nettles. Absolutely love them. My one real disappointment on this dish is there isn't more of that bourguignon sauce. You close your eyes or you are in France with this dish. I love the snails, I love the sauce. Uh, everything on here works so well with this wonderfully cooked chicken. A whole roast chicken is one of my favourite things. Uh, I know you've done yourself proud. Great round. Thank Bravo. You. The feedback from the judges was just stunning. I'm feeling a lot more positive now. Rohan is serving charcoal smoked paneer cheese layered with apricot and mint chutney, deep fried puri, cucumber filled with pineapple writer, and a mango, pomegranate, and peanut salad. I 
I love going into that cucumber, getting the yogurt and the cucumber together, getting sweetness and finishing with heat. What I've got an issue with, paneer in itself is dry, and we've got half the paneer left, yet all the beautiful mm. things that go with it have gone. Rohan, uh, your plate's very colourful, and I love the, the spice and the chilli that I'm getting. The paneer, that is very bland, you've tried to marinate it, but such a, a big chunks of it, maybe it, it was broken up through the dish. A vegetarian dish that's made up of cheese, fruit and spices, and that, for me, is not really what good vegetarian dish is all about when you just think of the amount of vegetables and things you could use to create something here today. I said, why to go for a meat and fish when everybody's going to go for a meat and fish? I said, let's go for something different. Well, let's see the result uh, when it comes out. Last is Andrew. He's prepared lamb three ways. Lamb and white pudding wellington, lamb cutlets and lamb faggots. Served with pea and wild garlic puree, scorched baby leeks and a rosemary and red currant jus. Andrew, this plate of food looks lovely. I think uh, from the chef I saw this morning uh, to the chef that I'm seeing standing in front of me right now, I, I think I'm actually looking at a completely different cook. That's a first-class dish, that, Andrew. Absolutely first-class. I don't think I can fault that. Thank you, chef. I'll say something now. I didn't see that coming. Neither did I. <laughs> well, you did. It's, 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 right there, it's right there in your face. Thank you, chef. <laughs> the cooking of the lamb is exquisite. The Wellington is fabulous. The faggot and that sauce and the charring of the leek and the freshness of the peas underneath. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. I very much like the look of this dish because you seem to have brought a little touch of delicacy with heartiness. Not an easy thing to combine. It looks stylish enough to me, but it looks hearty enough to me and something I want to tuck into. Favourite thing for me is the faggot and how that rich sauce coats it. The lamb wellington with the crispy pastry, I thought it was so clever. I'm really, really pleased for you. Really you pleased so for you, Andrew. Well done. Thank you. Andrew, I almost want to make you go back to your bench and make us a cheesecake. <laughs> very, very well done. Thank you very much. You dream of moments like that, like that could not have been any better. I'm literally just over the moon. I'm just honestly speechless. Earlier today, when I was standing there watching failed cheesecakes, I was getting a little nervous. However, this signature dish test has proved to be fantastic. We got more than one good chef in this kitchen today. There's one thing I didn't see coming today, and that was Andrew. That dish was just spot on. Brenton, for me, was the one chef that stood out from the skills test and he continued to do that in the second round. He just tipped that dish over and just made it absolutely stand out. I'm just going to flag up one contestant who I think is struggling at this level, and that's Harrison. Harrison was just trying too hard and just didn't know when to say, enough is enough. Rohan came in here full of confidence, big smile on his face, and nailed the skills test. I love the spices with the fruit, but Two big slabs of paneer just didn't work very well. For me, I just found there was too much sweetness on the plate and the paneer was just too dense. I done 110 persons there <laughs> to keep myself in the competition. Let's see, hope for the best. Anil had a tough round in the skills test, but he is another one of our chefs that came back in today and proved the point that he is a chef to be reckoned with. I thought his chicken dish was excellent. I love the snails, the sauce, the garnish. It was bold, big and brave, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. From the last round, I felt that I really let myself down, but I think I came back, and, uh, and I'm really glad the judges um, like, like my food, and hopefully they'll be enough. You guys had issues with Joe 
I really liked the stuff he was doing. The sea bass, I liked the little gel. However, I was on my own here a little bit, I think. Everything outside of the dish had more excitement than the fish itself. I just don't think Joe really knows what that plate of food was all about. I just really liked him. I thought he was different and, and exciting. I liked the curry through the fregula, and then the cooking of the fish was, was good, but it wasn't a, a harmonious dish for me. I did the dish how I wanted to. If I'm going, it's because they didn't like what I was doing rather than a stupid mistake that, that I made. Between the first and the second round, there has been an amazing turn of fortune for some of these chefs in here today. However, I think it's pretty clear which three of these deserve to be quarter-finalists. We can only take the best three through. The first chef leaving the competition is... Harrison. Our second chef leaving the competition is... Rohan. Thank you. Thank you. And our final chef leaving the competition is... Joe. Thank you, Joe. Obviously, it's going to leave at this point. It's always nice to have a reminder now and again that you've got so much to learn. A couple of days of inevitable mourning, and then it will spur me on further anyway. It feels terrible to be leaving, but I did not expect the pressure of having the three judges. Uh, absolutely gutted. <laughs> the being let down on that buddy led dish was a bunny, so that's why I'm going today. <laughs> Congratulations, you are MasterChef quarter finalists. Absolutely unbelievable. I'd written myself off after the skills test and to come back strong, that's exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm just so happy that they liked it. Well, I feel absolutely amazing. I wasn't sure I was going to make it through after the, a pretty bad first round. I'm looking forward to, uh, to what's next. I've got a lot more to offer. I'm exhausted, to be honest. It was an intense day, quite stressful. I'm so relieved that it's over. Next time, it's the quarter final. And the chefs must prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. That is sensational. That's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Only the best of them will get to cook for the critics. This guy's mean. You're a fusspot. This is the bee's knees.